Good morning and welcome to Computer Science 422. Um, we have some videos that I hope you're all going to enjoy. And I've got to get used to my equipment here. This is Computer Science 422. Let me get the brush stroke a little bit less. Um, you may recall I've given you a homework assignment. Um, I've threatened to put it on an exam and I haven't done so, but I'm going to do it pretty soon. And I, I said to you, consider a statement like follows. If I were to say, if count one is greater than count two, um, something like do this, call bigger, else call smaller. And then when we're done with the whole thing, we call something else. Call something else. So the whole point of the serial series of lectures here is, is how do we do this right over here? How do we do this? Now, a lot of what we're going to talk about here is going to be review from Computer Science 221. Um, we'll talk about the LC3. Um, we're going to talk about a bunch of other things here, and some of that stuff I'm going to go through rather quickly. Um, first of all, um, on the LC3, you may recall that there were three flags, um, and they were basically, there was what was called the negative flag, and there was the zero flag, and there was the positive flag. And what we could certainly do if we wanted to see if count one was um, greater than count two is, is we could put these into registers and we could subtract them. So basically what we would do is, is we would look at we would look at count one minus count two. And basically if count one minus count two was equal to zero, that would set the zero flag. If count one minus count two was positive, that would mean that count one was bigger, and that would set the positive flag. If count one minus count two was negative, that meant that count two was the bigger one, and that would set the negative flag. But unfortunately, on the pick, we don't have these three flags. And if you go and you take a look, the only flags that exist on the pick, there is a zero flag, like that. There is another flag there, which is a strange one, and I'll save that for another homework assignment, DC, and that stands for decimal carry. And there's one other flag, which is the C, which is the carry flag. So first of all, we certainly can check for the equality of two variables, okay, two file registers on the pick, by subtracting them and looking at the zero flag. But what if I want to determine if one is bigger than the other? Which one of these three flags is going to help me out? That is the point of these videos that we're looking at. And um, this is actually, I'm going to assign you this and probably ask it to you on a quiz at some point. How would you actually write this over here? Okay, so moving right along, let's get this out of the way. What we need to do here first is, is we need a quick review of signed and unsigned integers. And again, this is review from what you saw back in Computer Science 221. Now, first of all, because file registers on the PIC are 8 bits, we're going to be considering 8-bit quantities. As a future homework assignment, maybe I'll ask you to consider how would we look at 16-bit quantities. Um, so first of all, if we look at unsigned bits, unsigned integers, that's the easy one. Unsigned integers. And if I were to have 
um, say an unsigned integer that looked like this, um, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Um, remember, what's going on here is, is that these are powers of 2. So this would be 2 to the 0, and this would be 2 to the 1st, and that's 2 to the 2nd, and that's 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 6th, and 2 to the 7th is 128. So in this case, I've got 1, 1, I've got 1, 4, I have 116, and I have 128. So what does that equal to? Well, 16, so that's 21 plus 28, that is 149. So this number right here in base 2 is 149 base 10, if we are assuming that it's an unsigned integer. Okay, that's the easy one. What's a little bit harder is, is how do we represent signed integers? Well, we do it in a very weird way. And what we do is, is we do this thing and we use what's called two's complement notation. And what that means is, is suppose we wanted to think about what does say minus three, how would I represent that? And the answer is, is what I'm going to first do is, is I'm going to look at positive 3. So positive 3 in binary is an 8-bit number, would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Remember, that's 1 plus 2 is 3. Now, the way that I am going to get minus 3 is, is a two-step process. So the first step is 1, I complement the bits. And if I complement these bits, I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then the next thing I do is, is I add 1. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put a 1 over there. And I come down here and that gives me 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So this is minus 3. Okay? Now, one of the things that we'll note, and again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I am going to assume that you're comfortable with this, is, is that when I'm dealing with signed integers, it turns out that the leading, the leading bit, and when I say the leading bit, I mean the most significant bit, most significant The most significant bit, that's the leftmost bit, for positive numbers is always 0. And for negative numbers, it is always 1. So that is a quick and easy way to determine if I'm dealing with a positive number or a negative number. For example, if I have this number over here, And I'm told that this is a signed 8-bit integer. And I'm asked, what is it? I look at it and I go, well, I see a leading one, so I know it's a negative number. Now, so I can't go ahead and use the same trick as before and go, well, that's 1, 2, 4, 8. What I am going to do is, is I'm going to calculate the 2's complement of this number, and that I can work on. So if I calculate the 2's complement of this number, I get 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 
and I'm going to add a 1 to it, and I get 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And I go, well, that's a 1, and that's a 2, 4, that's an 8, 16, 32, 64. So this number over here is 64 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1. 64 plus 8 is 72, 74. This is 75. So that says to me then that this number over here is minus 75. Okay? Um, that's as much as I'm going to say about these things. I'm going to give you some homework to do these. But now I have another question that I want to ask you. Let's consider, so first of all, we know that if we're dealing with um, positive, if I'm dealing with 8-bit signed numbers, I know that the biggest 8-bit signed number would be that one right there, okay? I can't write a bigger positive number. In effect, that's equal to 127. Okay? And what I want to do here is I want to do an experiment. I want to come over here and write down another. Seeing that we had that over there before, that's the number 3. And I want to come over here and I want to add them. Now, I know 127 plus 3 is 130. And since I know that this is the largest signed inter positive integer I can have in an 8-bit signed integer, that somehow when I come over here and I add it, something weird's going to happen. Well, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add them, and a 1 plus 1 is a 0, and I'm going to carry the 1, and I get 1 plus 1 plus 1, well, that's a 1, and I'm going to carry the 1, and I get a 1 plus 1 is a 0, carry the 1, and I'm going to go 1 plus 1 plus 0 is a 0. Carry the 1. And over here I get 1 plus 1 plus 0. Well, that's a 0. Carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 0 is a 0. Carry the 1. And over here I get 1 plus 1. Well, that's a 0. Carry the 1. And over here I get 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. And I can see already that something strange is going on here because I've apparently I've added two positive integers and look at what I got here. I got an 8-bit quantity where the leading bit is a 1. That would indicate that, that the two positive integers I added together gave me a negative number, which is of course absurd. And what I have here is an overflow. Now, I want you to consider another example. If this is 127, then what's minus 127? Well, minus 127 would be, I'm going to complement the bits, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and I'm going to add 1 to it, and that gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and it seems to me that we calculated minus 3 before, there's minus 3, okay? So I'm going to come over there and write minus 3. So minus 3 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So remember, this is minus 127, and this is minus 3. And when I go ahead and I add them, I get minus 130. But what happens when I add these? Well, 1 plus 1 is a 0, carry the 1, and over here I'm going to get a 1, and over here I get a 1, and here I get a 1, 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 and here I get a 0, and notice that I do carry out a 1, but I've used up all 8 bits. So, sometimes we joke and say that this thing goes to the bit bucket right over there. But again, notice what happened here. Now, I have added up two negative numbers, and it appears that I've gotten a positive number. Um, some people call this an overflow. Some people call this an underflow. I actually call it an overflow as well. In other words, what's going on is, is we're adding together some quantities that gives us a result that can no longer fit in here.
So the question is, how do I know there's an overflow? Or I should say, how does the computer know? There's an R in overflow. Well, it has to do with these carry bits over here. And what I want to do is the following. I'm going to come over here and rewrite this over here. So there is zero. Let me... Zero, and then there's one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And this is 127. And then we had three. And there was one, two, three, four, one, two, like that. And that's a three. And basically, what I have to do is, is I have to watch what gets carried in here, and I have to watch what gets carried out of here. And that's what's going to tell me if there is an overflow or not. Now, in this particular case, okay, so what I'm going to call this is, is I'm going to call this, I'm going to talk about the high order carry in. And I'm going to talk about the high order carry out. So this is the high order carry in. This is the high order carry out. So again, let's take a look here. Let's remember what happened here. I had a zero and I carried a one. And I had a one here and there's a one. And there's a zero here and there's a one. And there's a zero here and there's a one. And there is a zero here one, zero here, one, zero here, and there's a one. Did I do that correctly? Let's check myself again. Zero carry the one, that's a one carry the one, zero carry the one, zero carry the one, zero carry the one, a zero carry the one, that's a zero carry the one. Oh, I'm sorry, and there is a one here. So there was a, uh, this is incorrect here. So I had a one going in here and then one plus zero plus zero is a one and the carry out was a zero. Nothing got carried out. Everybody okay with that? Okay, so what happened over here is, is the high order carry in was a one and the high order carry out was a zero. Now, something very interesting. If you come over here and you look at the other example that we did over here, this one over here, you can see that the carry in was a zero and the carry out was a one. So basically, I'm going to say, if I have either one of these situations here, that's an overflow. Okay, um, if I have any of the other situations here, if I were to have a 0, 0, or if I have a 1, 1, believe it or not, in these situations right here, everything's okay. There's no overflow, there's no underflow. The answer that you get makes perfect sense. Okay, we're in shape now to put this all into action. Um, here's what we have to do. Remember, if I want to know, if I'm checking two variables, let's call them A and B, and I want to know if A is greater than B. Okay, and remember what we're going to do is, is we're just going to look at A minus B. So if A minus B is greater than zero, then A is greater than B. If A minus B is less than zero, then B is greater than A. 
And here's what I want to assume. I'm just going to make a, a simplifying assumption and as homework, I'm going to ask you to generalize it. I want to say, let's assume A and B are both positive. So first of all, if A and B are both positive, I want to, the first question I have is, is if I look at A minus B, am I going to get an overflow? And the answer is no. I mean, think about it this way. A could be, I could be going, the largest positive integer would be 127, and the smallest positive integer would be 1. Well, that's equal to 126, and there's no overflow. And then the other thing I could be doing is, is I could just reverse these two, and I could go 1 minus 127, and that's equal to minus 126, and that's still no overflow. So the first thing I want to do is, is I, want, I want you to recognize that when I go A minus B, if I'm assuming A and B are both, both positive, the answer is, is, can there be an overflow? And the answer is no. The other thing that I want you to recognize is, is that if I want to go A minus B, if I'm working on a computer like the LC3, well, the LC3 doesn't have a minus operator. But what I can do is, is I can go A plus a minus B. And what I can do is, is I can calculate this thing over here because all I would have to do is, is first I would just complement B. which means flip all of its bits, and then I would add 1. Okay, so really we can view subtraction as being a special kind of addition. Okay, so the other thing I want to say here now is, is let's suppose we're going ahead and I'm adding A plus a minus B. Now if I'm assuming that A and B are both positive, minus B is a negative number, and what's going to happen here is, is A is going to look like this. And then there's going to be and B, B is a positive number. So if I compute minus B, it's definitely going to have a one over here. And now I want to consider what can possibly happen here when I'm adding these two. Okay, now remember what's going to happen is, is I'm either going to get a positive number or I'm going to get a negative number. Okay, so when I come over here, I have a couple of choices. I'm either going to get a zero here or the other choice I could have here is like this. And when I come over here, and I'm adding them together, I get a 1. Well, first of all, let's think about how this can happen, okay? Remember that when I'm looking at the carry in and carry out, we gave conditions in our previous slide, which I hope I can find. Here it is right over here. We said that these conditions won't happen. It won't be the case that when I look at the carry in and carry out that one of them is a one and one of them is a zero because that would be an overflow. It's always going to be the case that either what is coming in is a zero and going out is a zero or what's coming in is a one and what's going out is a one. So over here, I ask myself, well, what possibly could be going on over here? Well, if I've got a one and a zero and the thing is positive, that means that the carry in must have been a 1. And if the carry-in is 1, because if the carry-in is 1, I get 1 plus 0 plus 1, that's a 0, then that means that the carry-out is also a 1. Okay? In this situation over here, the only way that this is going to happen is, is if the carry-in is a 0. And that also means that the carry-out is a 0. And now we now have the answer to how we can tell what's going on here. And we can see it. I'm going to open this up because we're ready to just give the final results over here. 
If I go A minus B and the carry flag is 1, if I go A minus B and the carry flag is set, okay, as it is over here, then A is greater than B. How do I know that? Because I went A minus B and I ended up with a positive number. If A minus B is a positive number, then A is greater than B. If the carry flag is clear, then B is greater than A. Okay? In other words, here, I did a subtraction and I ended up with a negative number. If A minus B is less than zero, then B is greater than A. So this is how I'm able to determine if one quantity is bigger than the other on the pick. To that, I say, ta-da! And now, we will give you some homework.